Welcome to this very interesting lecture. But before I start, I just want to mention something that uh, came along my way. I was doing some research on the Sumerian literature and history <laughs> and archaeology. And then I came across, and I've got the book here, you can see it on the shelf to your left. This is a translation of ancient literature, hieroglyphics, cuneiform. And there's one section called the wisdom literature of the people of Mesopotamia. And I read through it. It's, it's very interesting. Then, then I looked at the quotes from the different ancient sages, the Greek philosophers. But then I came to do research on the parables of Jesus. And you know, the significance of all these authors, all these wisdom, ancient wisdom literature just fades away in the light of the beauty and depth of the parables. And I trust that you will enjoy the words of Jesus as much as I've enjoyed it while doing research on this. The first one is called the Pearl of Great Price. We like expensive stuff. <laughs> and we're going to look at section A of the parables in which divine love, is there something greater than love? Human love? Divine love, what's that? Have you experienced it? And then mercy, you know, we need mercy. <laughs> we falter so many times, we need mercy. And justice, there should be discipline. You know, when I was naughty as a little boy, I looked for hiding. And I got it. It's medicine. So welcome to the enlightening parables where Jesus tells us in person of his divine love, his mercy and his justice. What a tremendous privilege to listen to him. You know, it's, it's all about Jesus in search of sinners. Who like sinners? We show them. But here it says, it's all about Jesus in search for sinners. That's you and I. And about us, as sinners, seeking for salvation. We need it. Seeking for salvation. Jesus taught this encouraging parable during his second Galilean tour at Capernaum, next to the Sea of Galilee. What a serenic sight. Little waves breaking on the stones there. People could hear it. Atmosphere is very, very important. And then he spoke. Again, the kingdom of heaven. Oh, what's the kingdom of heaven, heaven like? The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking. Beautiful at seeking, beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant. So he, here you've got a businessman. Man is checking the internet. He's looking all over to buy the best pearl on the planet. Our Saviour compared blessings of redeeming love to a precious pearl. He illustrated this lesson by the parable of the merchant seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. He was bankrupt. <laughs> he sold everything. Christ himself is the pearl of great price. Nothing can compare to him. 
and he offers himself to you and me. In Jesus, my dear friend, is gathered all the glory of the Father. If you want to know what the Father's glory is like, study the life of Jesus. In Jesus is gathered all the glory of the Father and the fullness of Godhead. Gather, fullness, synonymous. He is the brightness of the Father's glory and the expressed image of his person. Glory has to do with God's character. The glory of the attributes of God is expressed in his character. You know, you pick up the character, kind of character when you associate with someone. Are we going to associate with Jesus in this series? It is without flaw. The righteousness of Christ as a pure white pearl has no defect, no stain. In him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, says Colossians 2 verse 3. He is made, listen to this, he is made unto us, this refers to us now, wisdom, do you need wisdom? And righteousness, do you need righteousness? And sanctification and redemption, Christ is made all these for us, says Paul in 1 Corinthians 1, 30. No human endeavor can enhance or add to God's magnificent, priceless gift called Jesus. You know, this is so precious to me. God the Father, the loving God the Father, gave Jesus as a gift. Please, get him into your life. All that can satisfy the needs and longings of the human soul in this world, and listen to this, and in the world to come, is found in Jesus. There are needs in this life which only Jesus can fulfill. There will be needs in the afterlife in heaven which only Jesus would be able to fulfill. So, my friend, we have to have Jesus. He is the pearl. Our precious Redeemer he is so priceless that all else can be considered as a loss compared to him. But listen to the following very sad words. He came, and he came a very long way from the heights of glory to the depths of this planet sin. He came to his own because he made us. He's our Redeemer, he's our Creator. And his own did not receive him. We'll not be lost one day because we've sinned, but because we've rejected the greatest gift God can give men and women, Jesus. The light of God shone into the darkness. This world was pitch dark. But the darkness has not understood it. What a sad statement. But not everyone disregarded heaven's gift. The merchant man in the parable represents a class who was sincerely desiring truth. Are you desiring truth? In different nations, there were earnest and thoughtful men who had sought literature and science and religious and religions of the heathen world for that which they could receive as the soul's treasure. When you study the literature of the ancient world, you can see it in their literature, in the gods they worshipped. Only one can satisfy my deep longings and your deepest longings my friend it's Jesus Cornelius the Roman and the Ethiopian eunuch were part of this huge class who were hungering for a religion that could touch their heart and by the way God puts this craving 
a sort of longing for him into our beings. He's doing everything for us. We just have to accept it. Among the Jews, there were also those who were seeking for that which they had not. Is there a void, a vacuum in your life? Dissatisfied with a formal religion, they longed for that which was spiritual and uplifting. And today, people are also seeking for something that will bring soul satisfaction. Christ's chosen disciples belong to this latter class. They've been longing and praying for light from heaven and when Christ revealed them revealed himself to them that was a tremendous moment they received him with gladness and he wants to reveal himself to you and me please receive him with gladness don't let this opportunity pass you by in the parable, the pearl is not re represented as a gift. We must remember this. Not represented as a gift. So, how does it work? <laughs> what price did the merchant man spend to get the pearl? How much did he pay? Since Christ is referred to in the scriptures as a gift, Many people are confused as to what this means. Yes, he, he is a gift, but only to those who completely surrender themselves wholly to him. So he becomes my gift if I surrender myself wholly to him. And by the way, this is the best thing one can do. We have to give ourselves to Christ. God, here I am. To live a life of willing obedience to all his requirements. Because his requirements is expressions of love. All that we are, all the talents and capabilities we possess, are the Lord's to be consecrated to his service. That means to be kind to people, to forgive people. When we do this, Jesus with all the treasures of heaven, gives himself to us. <laughs> then we obtain the pearl of great price. Are you willing to pay this price? Salvation is a free gift, and yet it is to be bought and then sold again. The heavenly mall, to use a modern name, has a special going on right now, my friend. It's, it concerns the pearls of great price, which are for free. In this market, all may obtain the goods of heaven. Revelation 3, 8 says, I've set before you an open door. You can walk in. <laughs> Jesus says, and no one can shut it. My dear friend, God has opened a huge door to his mercies, to his treasures, to himself. Walk in and possess him. We're invited to come and visit the mega treasure house of God's riches, irrespective of your spiritual condition or social standing. It's inclusive, it's not exclusive. You don't have to wear a mask, as we did during COVID-19, or show your ID. No security guards at the entrance to God's treasure house. The heavenly staff at the treasure house will greet you with the greatest welcome smile you've ever experienced. They will invite you to come and view the greatest gifts you have ever seen. Listen to the melodious, gracious voice of the CEO of the treasure house. I counsel you isn't this beautiful? To buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. If you decide to visit God's treasure house, you will become a spiritual billionaire in a split second. 
There's no delay, no delay in this case. But that's not all he offers. And white garments. White stands for purity. That you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Are you naked and dirty and ugly? The treasure house, my friend, offers you a pure white garment, the righteousness of Jesus. These are the treasures, unbelievable treasures. If you decide to visit God's treasure house, you'll be rich, as I mentioned, in a split second, become, becoming a billionaire. It is obtainable by our willing obedience. And by the way, obedience is a great joy. When I fell in love with my wife and she with me, <laughs> obedience was not a problem. It is obtained by our willing obedience, by giving ourselves to Jesus as his own purchased possession. God, here am I. Please possess me. And by the way, we have a longing to be possessed and to possess. So he's addressing else psychological needs, education, even of the highest class, cannot of itself bring a man nearer to God. You can study archaeology, and this is my favorite subject, but without the Bible, it does not bring me closer to him. The Pharisees were favored with every temporal and spiritual advantage. And they said with boastful pride, we are rich, we have become wealthy and have need of nothing. Yet they were poor and they were blind and they were naked. Christ offered them the pearl of great price, but they did not accept it. Listen to what he said to them with tears in his eyes. Assuredly, he weeps. I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. Matthew 21, 31. We cannot earn salvation, but we are to seek for it as much interest and perseverance as though we would abandon everything in the world for it. My friend, if he knocks at your heart, Sell everything you have for possessing. There are some who seem always to be seeking for heavenly, for the heavenly pearl. But then you do not make an entire surrender. Not part of your heart, but all of your heart. You've got to give him all of your heart. But they do not make the entire surrender of their wrong habits. God wants to free us from wrong habits. They do not die to self that Christ may live in him. Jesus says, if you want to follow me, deny yourself. It's good discipline. You live longer. Therefore, they do not find the precious pearl. They have not overcome unholy ambitions and they love for worldly attractions. They do not take up the cross and follow Christ in the path of self-denial and sacrifice. People think this is awkward, this is beautiful. You identify with a great pearl who went through deep waters in order to save us. Almost Christians, yet not fully Christians. They seem near the kingdom of heaven, but they cannot enter there. Now listen to this. Almost but wholly saved means to be not almost, but wholly lost. You cannot afford to be lost one day. Heaven is such a marvelous place in the presence of God and the angels and the Father. The parable of the merchant man seeking goodly pearls has a double significance. This is what I like about the parables. 
that's not limited. It applies not only to men seeking the kingdom of heaven, but to Jesus seeking his lost inheritance. You become the pearl in this parable. Can you believe it? Some people think you're the rubbish and sometimes you think you are. But there's someone else who regards you and I as precious pearls. This is what I like about God. Christ the heavenly merchantman seeking goodly pearls. So in lost humanity, the pearl of Christ, Christ, we are part of the lost humanity on this planet. In us, defiled and ruled by sin, he saw the possibilities of redemption. I don't care what your situation is. The God of love sees in you possibilities of redemption. I love this. Hearts that have been the battleground of conflict with Satan and with people and that have been rescued by the power of love. This is how it rescues us. By the power of love are more precious to the Redeemer than are those who have never fallen. What did I got on me? He loves us more than the angels. What love, what Tremendous love is this. Jesus looked upon us not as vile and worthless, and we are, by the way, but as what we may become through a redeeming love. He left his glory and put on humanity. This was a big contrast. He left his glory, which is indescribable, and put on humanity our flesh, in order to buy the pearl, you and I. My dear friend, he came a long way to purchase you. Don't disappoint him. And having found us, reset us in his own crown. Original factory settings like Adam and Eve. For they shall be as the stones of a crown. Lifted up as an ensign upon his land. Zechariah 9, 16. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. Malachi 3, 17. When I was a little boy, we sang a beautiful song in Afrikaans and English. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they will shine in their beauty, bright gems, for his crown. <laughs> we'll be part of his crown one day. When he cometh, when he cometh. Isn't this a beautiful song? To make up his jewels. He's looking for jewels. All his jewels, precious jewels. He's loved and his own. So what will happen to us and our children? His stars. In heaven one day, what's he going to do with it? The stars, you and I. Like the stars of the morning, his brightness adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Sing that song if you know it. Like the stars of the morning. You know, sometimes I get up at three o'clock in the morning and I, I look up. The stars are shining. And God uses this metaphor to tell us that one day in the great cosmos we are going to shine with His glory. Like the stars in the morning, His brightness at dawning. They shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for His crown. Little children, little children who love their Redeemer, all the jewels, precious jewels, He's loved and his own. Sorry if I become a little emotional now. I have a special dream. Maybe you share my dream. I have a special prayer. Maybe you share this prayer as well. 
I want my children. I want my loved ones with me in heaven one day. Is this, is this your prayer as well? Let me pray for you right now. Father in heaven, sometimes our children drift away. There are so many people, parents with pain because of their children. I pray for these people. I pray for my own situation. May we at last see them safe with us in heaven. Christ, the precious pearl, this heavenly treasure, is the theme on which we most need to meditate. There's such a lot of rubbish in social media. Meditate on this heavenly treasure, on the pearl of great price who came to save us, who calls us pearls. Ask God to send His Holy Spirit to reveal to us the preciousness of Jesus, the goodly pearl. The time of the Holy Spirit's power is the time when, in a special sense, Jesus, the heavenly gift, the heavenly pearl, is to be sought and found. In Christ's day, many heard the gospel, like today, but their minds were darkened by false teaching, and they did not recognize the humble teacher of Galilee, the saint of God. But after Christ's ascension, his enthronement was marked by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, his witnesses proclaimed the power of the risen Savior. If the Holy Spirit takes possession of us, we can proclaim him with great power. The light of heaven penetrated the darkened minds of those who had been deceived by the enemies of Christ. They now saw him, after the Holy Spirit was brought out, to be a prince and saviour, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, Acts 5 verse 31. The Holy Spirit wrought a mighty work in the salvation and the revelation of Jesus, the pearl of great price, and the hearts of people. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they could proclaim Jesus, the pearl of great price. They saw him encircled with the glory of heaven. What a moment in their history! With infinite treasures in his hands, he bestowed upon all who would turn from their rebellion. As the apostles pictured the glory of the only begotten of the Father, 3,000 souls were convicted. If we can present Jesus, we will, by his grace, convict hearts of his beauty. I want to read this again. They saw him, that's Jesus, encircled with the glory of heaven. How do you see Jesus? With infinite treasures in his hands to bestow upon all who would turn from their rebellion. He wants to restore you. He wants to give you all the blessings, yes. Just yield your life to you. They made they were made to see themselves as they were. This is important to see yourself as you really are. Sinful and polluted and Christ as their friend and redeemer. On the one hand, they saw themselves. On the other hand, they saw the beauty of Jesus, the precious pearl. Christ was lifted up. Christ was glorified through the power of the Holy Spirit resting upon him. By faith they saw his humiliation. It's good to spend some time at, some time at Calvary. Suffering and death that they might not perish but have everlasting life. You have to see what Christ 
paid for your redemption. The revelation of Christ by the Spirit convinced them of His power and majesty. His power and majesty. And we can tap it. They stretched forth their hands to Him by faith, saying, I believe, my friend, do you believe that Jesus can do this for you? Then the glad tidings of the risen Saviour was carried to the inhabited world, says Paul. Can you believe it? A few believers went out, brought the good news of Jesus to lost sinners. The church saw converts flocking to her all from all directions. I wish it could happen today. Believers were reconverted, the back, backsliders. They united with Christians in seeking the pearl of great price. We should seek this pearl of great price. The prophecy was fulfilled. The weak shall be as David and the house of David as the angel of the Lord, Zechariah 12 verse 8. Everyone recognized the heavenly likeness of goodness and love in his brother. Sometimes we hate our brother. But when the Holy Spirit takes charge of your life, it's going to be different. One interest existed, dominated that time. All other objects were consumed by one. Every heart beats in unison. The only ambition of the believers was to reveal the likeness of Christ's character and to labour for those who are lost, for the enlargement of his kingdom. Come, join us. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Beautiful. So many painful divisions among people. Even the children of God. With great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Acts 4, 32, 33. The scenes are to be repeated and with greater power. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was the former rain, but the latter rain will be more abundant. My prayer for you is to be a part Taker of the latter rain. Jesus is about to come. We have to be filled with the sweet spirit, the Holy Spirit, and with the message of Jesus. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved, Acts 2.47. The Spirit of Christ animated the whole congregation, for they had found the pearl of great price. My dear friend, the Holy Spirit awaits our demand and our reception. Christ is again revealed in his fullness by the Holy Spirit's power. Sinners will discern the value of the precious pearl and with the apostles they will say, but what things were gained to me? These I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Philippians 3, verse 7 and 8. Sorry, <laughs> there's much more to, sp to share about the Pearl of Great Price. But next time, the story of the lost sheep. Are you lost? The shepherd is looking, searching for you where you are right now. Father in heaven, thank you for sending us and giving us the pearl of great price, Jesus. Help us to accept this gift. And thank you that you, in Jesus, looks at us 
not as filthy lost rubbish, but as people who have the potential to become beautiful pearls. Bless us as we study about your greatness and goodness and love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you.